Hi everybody, this is Leslie from GoToKitchens.com. It is so great to be here with you this afternoon. It is a gorgeous day. It is a gorgeous day here in Northern Colorado. And I'm actually gonna get to get out this evening or this afternoon and go have some fun. So, but before we do that, we are gonna come on here and I'm gonna show you guys. Fun. <laughs> Time for chips, that's right. I am gonna show you guys a classic recipe redo. This is set, thank you guys for already inviting followers. Thank you, you guys can follow those people's lead if you are here for the first time. Invite followers, there's splat. Invite followers, you just do that by touching that little, in, on Periscope you do this, right down here. Um, you just do that by touching that little guy right on top of his little bitty head and sharing out with your followers, right? Who doesn't like french fries? Thank you guys for doing that. Here on Facebook, right up here in the corner, if you're not following me, you can follow me by touching that, uh, follow live button right there. You can touch that and that will give you an alert when my broadcasts go live. I only do Facebook at noon mountain time on weekdays. So I'm not going to drive you crazy with Facebook posts. Um, but yes, I'd love to have you there. All right. Now you want French fries. Awesome. I'm going to make you want them even more in just about two shakes. So <laughs> I'm so excited to share this recipe with you guys. It is so easy. It is super, super fly easy. And I'm going to teach you all the tricks of the trade today. So sorry while I turn on my oven there. Um, my stove, not my oven. <clears throat> we are not making these in the oven. We are making these on the stovetop. So you don't even have to worry about heating up the kitchen like with your big old oven or anything. We're going to do everything right on the stovetop. It's super, super easy and it goes really fast. So let me introduce myself. Hello, I see that I have Gary Lee and Evan over on Facebook. I got all kinds of people over here on Periscope. It's great to have all you guys. Hey, Hillary, it's good to see you. It's good to have all of you guys here with me today. So let me introduce myself. My name is Leslie. I have a website, gotokitchens.com nothing for sale over there. The only thing that I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health. Simple as that. <laughs> I like to consider myself a light bulb expert. In fact, when you came in, when you came in this room right now, you saw hashtag uh, light bulb. And that is my hashtag that I use for all my cooking and wellness scopes. And I like to consider myself a light bulb expert. And I say that because I like for you to have light bulb moments in your health. I had a light bulb moment in my health, but it was almost too late. It was when I was diagnosed with cancer. And I don't want you to wait till it's too late. I don't want you to have to backpedal to get to a healthy state. I want you to be peddling forward and get into that healthy lifestyle. That's what I want. So uh, Hillary was just asking. Thank you, Hillary, for asking that. Um, my, I am doing, so just so you guys know, there, if I'm on uh, Facebook, this will be a little bit more difficult, but I'll post the link below. Um, <laughs> right um, uh, on on uh, on Periscope there is a channel called Parachute TV Parachute TV their hashtag or at Parachute TV one um, and I I am actually doing a spotlight show thank you there you go Hillary thanks for putting that in there I'm doing a spotlight show on February 22nd at 1 p.m. Mountain Time that's 3 p.m. Eastern and noon Pacific um, I'm doing uh, my kind of my debut there and we're gonna see if it's a good match for me if it's a good match for them if it all works out then I will have a regular show there at that time every single week it is next Monday I'm so excited <laughs> so excited so in the the name of the show thank you Karen the name of the show is called flip the switch and it all leads back to having those light bulb moments and so yes right before your show that's right Hillary has a show there too if you guys aren't following Parachute TV, there are tons of amazing broadcasters there. Um, Hillary, Hillary's on Monday. Um, uh, there's, a, I think there's a yoga that's going to be like right, right before you, Hillary, and then I'm going to be right before that, and then the yoga, then Hillary, um, and then later on that evening, it's Laura Clark uh, with the Whole Food Nanny, and so it's an amazing day of health and wellness on on uh, Parachute TV. I'm like, it's Healthy Monday. That's what you guys need to do on Mondays. <laughs> So I'm already remarketing for them. <laughs> So if you guys please would join me there, it would be awesome to have a huge audience surrounding me there, the people that I know and love and can get everybody excited about being there. That's right, Needless Mondays. It is on Periscope. Uh, you need to follow at Parachute TV one So follow them there, and uh, you can see all kinds of great broadcasting. They have a website, ParachuteTV.com, that you can go check out. It's like a TV channel. They have like listings for things there. So please go check it out. Thank you guys so much for that. There you go. Hillary, thank you for putting that in there. 
Um, so I am super excited about today. We have been doing recipe redos all week and I am so excited to show you French fries. <laughs> That's right. I'm so excited to show you guys french fries today. And although we're doing a recipe redo, your family and people, even picky eaters, are going to love this idea. I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do it. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the different types of things that we're using. We're going to use potatoes and we're going to use other things. And so we're going to talk about that just right now. We're going to use four different kinds of things to make french fries out of. And so we're going to do that right now and then I'm going to show you some I'm going to show you some ways to cut your french fries that you get these nice beautiful even cuts um, I'm going to show you right here on my cutting board I'm going to show you a couple of tips for that <clears throat> excuse me and I'm also going to show you how to make homemade ketchup which is out of sight dynamite you guys are going to freak out how easy it is so <laughs> potatoes and other things it's mostly potatoes by the way so just a variation I know you had to give them up <laughs> Yay! Yes, this is a healthy. These are still fried, but we are using a healthy oil to fry them in. So, hey, Sherry, it's good to see you. Thank you. Hey, Eric, it's good to see you here. Thank you, guys, everybody that's be, that's here right now. So, let's get started. Let's do this. So, I have already done a lot of the prep work um, for these french fries. So, <laughs> hey, Lucille. <laughs> So I've already done some of the cut work for these. I'm going to actually show you on a small fingerling how to get these beautiful cuts like this with your knife. These are This is something that you can do very easily. Once I was showed the trick how to do this, I was like, what in the world have I been doing all these years with my knife? <laughs> this cut is actually really, really easy to achieve without slicing your fingers off or without a gadget or anything like that. We're gonna use a cutting board and a knife to get these beautiful, nice, even French fry cuts. I know, what's the purple, right? You're like, ah, what's purple? There are not enough purple foods in this world. <laughs> so let's talk about what's on my plate here. First of all, I just have a regular fingerling. A fingerling is a potato that looks just like this. Uh, it is a small, <laughs> no, not a blunt knife. We're going to use another potato to cut the potato. <laughs> it's a potato knife. Um, but it is a, uh, this is a fingerling potato. They're actually really, really yummy. Um, they always come with nice, dirty skin, especially when you buy them at the farmer's market. And I do not wash them before I cook them because all of those nutrients in that dirt, I want in my body. God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. All right. So that's one of the things. That's what these are right here. The other thing that I have on here is another type of fingerling. These are purple fingerlings. Uh, <laughs> that's right. These are beautiful. Look how gorgeous those are. Look how beautiful that is. It's so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> yes, that's right. So I know these are the purple fingerlings. The outside of the skin looks almost black. You can see it there. See how it looks almost black. I have just cut these up. These just taste like potatoes. They do not taste like anything purple. They just taste like potatoes, but they are absolutely beautiful when you fry them up. It is. It's a purple potato. Same starches, same everything. The other thing that I have here, no surprise, is a sweet potato. These are just cut up in nice little french fry sizes. Sweet potato fries are some of my favorite things on the planet. I love sweet potato fries. They're plant sugars though, uh, Sherry. They don't react the same in the body. Um, so these are not like just regular sugars like a table sugar does. So no fear. Do not fear fruits and vegetables. Everybody's trying to demonize things like this, and you cannot demonize fruits and vegetables. The only way you can do that is you can demonize them by buying non-organic or GMO or something like that. So, <laughs> yes, so do not fear fruits and vegetables, okay? Now, it's not something you should be eating three meals a day, quite frankly. Let's be honest about that. In fact, you shouldn't be eating anything three meals a day every single day. Um, you should have a varied diet. So in a varied diet, potatoes are absolutely fine. So I don't even say in moderation. I love potatoes. The other thing that I have on here are these super white things. These are not potatoes. These are parsnips. <laughs> parsnips are so good for you parsnips have a huge variety have a huge variety of vitamins and minerals and nutrients this little white thing right here is amazing and this is what a parsnip looks like this is came from my uh, this came right out of the dirt um, usually they're not this gnarly quite frankly I know I love parsnips too they're usually not this gnarly usually in the grocery store you'll see them and they're nice they look like a big giant white carrot but this came from my farmers market 
I, yes, you do. Get on the parsnip bandwagon, will you? Uh, I know. So the one that I cut up actually had two legs. It was like this. It was kind of crazy, and I didn't want to. I did not want to use that. I know, right? He's like a little guy. He's my parsnip friend. <laughs> Me and my parsnip. It's like a big nose. Is what it's like. It's big, giant parsnip nose. Leslie, do you like French fries? No, I don't like French fries at all. <laughs> I love French fries. <laughs> So, this is a parsnip. Parsnips have, <laughs> parsnips, I'm sure somebody did. It was there for a long time. Parsnips have amazing qualities for you. They are super good. A lot of people are like, stay away from the white foods unless it's cauliflower. No, parsnips are really, really good for you. So they have tons of vitamins, tons of nutrients in them. Some of their bang, like one of their biggest bangs is vitamin C. Tons of that. <laughs> Don't run crazy like that, that's why. <laughs> uh, tons of vitamin C, they have fiber, they have folate, they have magnesium, they have uh, potassium, they have all kinds of stuff. They are in season, they're great. Um, they are absolutely amazingly wonderful to buy in the winter. From November to April, so from, from early winter to late spring, uh, you get these amazing or middle spring actually, you get these amazing uh, veggies and they're super fresh right in the market and these came, they had a huge pile of them at the farmer market, so yes, they're kind of hard to find out of season because they get mushy unless somebody has are storing them in a root cellar. So this is a parsnip and that's the other thing that we're going to fry up today in a potato. And now then, everybody knows that I have a super picky eater. Actually, he's not picky. He has, we'll talk about that. Actually, Robin and I are going to do a blab about his pickiness and talking about him eating picky food, you know, being picky about food and how it's assumed that he's picky, but we're going to talk about what really is going on there. Probably next month, we will try to do that blab sometime in March. So anyway, and how we get around it and how we help him with it. But I told him, I was like, can you please try a parsnip and tell me if you like it or not? And he's like, yeah, I'll try it. He's actually getting very adventurous. And so I, I had him fried up and everything. And he took one. He was like, oh, that's really good. I was like, yeah. He's like, it's like a little bit sweeter potato. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I know. So absolutely, absolutely. So yes, Sherry, do not fear the potatoes. Don't eat them every single day, but do not fear them either. All right, let's, let's talk about what's happening over here. I have a pan of water boiling because we are actually going to parboil these potatoes before we fry them. I'm going to fry them on this, not on, not on this. I'm going to fry them in my skillet over here, but we're going to use this burner. But I'm going to parboil them. Parboiling basically means that you are softening them slightly and that is going to help in the frying process because you know when you try to fry potatoes in a skillet if you don't use like tons and tons and tons and tons of oil, right? If you don't use tons and tons and tons of oil, then they get hard and brittle and everything. This actually this actually helps them to soften at their core a little bit and make it when you fry them that you don't have to fry them as long, number one. And number two, um, make it where you get a nice crispy edge but a nice soft inside as well. So we're going to parboil uh, these potatoes. In fact, that is going right now. And I'm just going to stick the whole lot of them in there all together. We're just going to put them in there all together, simple, simple, and they're going to boil there for about three to five minutes. I'm actually going to pull it off of a rolling boil here and turn it down just a little bit. So we're just going to let those boil. That is what parboiling is. A lot of people do it with rice and stuff like that, but we're going to do it with these potatoes. It's great. It's a great technique for frying a potato. You guys cannot see that very well, so let's turn that off. That's a little bit better. Okay, let me turn it all the way off. There we go. Oh yeah, that's much better. All right, so let's let's talk about how to get these beautiful cuts on a French fry. This is. I'm sorry, I have to go at an angle, so please forgive me. This is super easy. The first thing that I want you to do is to hold your chef knife properly, and that is just like this. See how I have it in my hand right here, and then a pinch right beyond the shaft, right beyond the handle. You see how I'm holding it there? That is going to give you a nice grip. The other thing that I want you to be careful with when you're using a big sharp knife like this is I want you to, I want you to have dry hands. So many people will wash their hands and then pick up their chef knife and have wet everything and then still keep. Yeah, I can. Um, 
thank you for saying that, and still keep trying to cut with it. And they have a wet hand with a wet handle and a wet vegetable, and it's dangerous. So please, please, please don't do that. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to make one cut. I'm just going to go, I'm not going to cut it like this, but I'm going to go very, very thin, very, very thin, just like that. We're going to make a flat cut on the bottom of the, or on the side of this potato, just like that. See that flat cut? That's all I cut off there. Very thin little layer. Then we're going to turn it and put the flat side down. Now this gives me, instead of having this, trying to roll around and cut, right? <laughs> Good. Awesome. <laughs> this is where you always cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. Uh, see, instead of me trying to have to cut and like make all these perfect cuts with that, then I have a nice flat surface and this potato's not going anywhere. Then you're going to make a bit of a claw. See how my hand is clawed there? And you're going to make a slice in here about the thickness that you think that your french fry should be. So you're going to go down and make a cut. You're going to come over with your knife and you're going to make another cut. Now I have, now I have three slices and I'm trying to make them as even as possible. And then I'm gonna half that again because that's about the size that I have in my pot over here right now. So then I have this beautiful, I have this beautiful cut. I'm sorry, it's, it's hard to see white things on here. I have this beautiful cut little French fry. Super, super easy. I do not peel these. Uh, I actually peel the parsnips, but I do not peel my, and I peel the sweet potato, but I do not peel my, uh, my fingerlings. So one more time, let's go. And you can actually, if you want, you can just stick that other piece in there as well. So one more time, you're gonna make a bit of a claw. You're gonna make one slice very thin where you get a flat edge and you're gonna roll it over to that flat edge. Then you're gonna make cuts the thickness that you want your French fries to be, just like that. And then in half again, because you want your French fries so that they cook evenly. So when they cook, that when you cook them and fry them, that they cook evenly. So that, and that applies to anything that you're cutting, that applies to anything that you're cutting that is round like this. So anything that you think of round, put a flat edge on it and then, be, then begin your cutting process. You're going to be so much happier with that and you're not going to be like trying to chop your fingers off. So I have to rinse off this knife because these knives... I'm very particular about my knives, and I should be particular about my cuff towel, but I have seemed to lost it, so let's just get another one. Um, and I dry it. As soon as I'm done with my knife, I, especially these Japanese knives, especially a knife of this quality, I wash it and I dry it, just like that. And then I can just set it on my drying board and before I put it back in my knife block. So there you go. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of knife skills for you this morning. Do not ever put your knives in the dishwasher. The dishwasher will kill your sharp knives, just saying. So we're going to use splat, and we're going to move this out of the way. We're done with that portion of the show. <laughs> Tonight on our show, we're going to bring our skillet over. We're going to bring the skillet over, and we are going to put about a tablespoon, and only a tablespoon, if you can believe that, of coconut oil down into the skillet. First, I'm going to preheat it. My potatoes are almost done parboiling over here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hello everybody on, hi Paloma, it's good to see you. Hi everybody over here on Facebook. Hi everybody on Periscope. I'm sorry I have my back to the, uh, to the camera a lot today, I apologize. Um, it's when I'm cooking that just happens sometimes, so. All right, so uh, we have our potatoes parboiled now. They've been doing that for, you know, three to five minutes and I'm gonna turn that heat off. Do not put your knives in the dishwasher. Um, I had it on a medium high, so you want it just, see how it's just barely boiling there? Can you see that? It's a rolling boil, but it's not like crazy rolling, 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 rolling boil. Um, that's what you want to do, three to five minutes only, and that is going to actually give you, set you up for success. I am going to go, yep, yeah, I'm going to go over, uh, and I did not get my colander out. I always forget something. You guys ever notice that I always forget something? I'm gonna go get my colander out and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna drain these babies real quick. So hang with me. You guys can watch right up here in the microwave, apparently. <laughs> now the parboiling is not absolutely necessary, but you're gonna get a little frustrated. I can tell you that. 
you're going to get a little frustrated by the uh, by the potatoes and trying to get a perfect fry on them. So that's what I like to do. It is. It's a microwave mirror. It's so funny. Sherry pointed that out to me. I was like, oh my gosh, you totally can see me. So my skillet is still not as hot as I want it. You actually want a pretty, pretty deep, hot skillet before you start there. So I'm going to let that go. Does anybody have any questions so far? Can I answer any questions so far? Sorry, I'm like, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm way back in here. <laughs> we'll turn this so you guys can see me and we'll talk a little bit while this is heating up. So I want my skillet to be hot enough that when I put my hand here that I want to move it away. This is not a nonstick skillet, actually. This is an enamel. This is made by a company called Chantal. Um, hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. This is made by a company called Chantal, and uh, they actually are one of my sponsors in a way. I don't make any money from them, but they give me free cookware. <laughs> so this is, um, I can't remember exactly what this line is called, and I always have a hard time. Here's what this particular line is called right there. Um, this is the, what is it? Copper fusion. Sorry, I should be better at this. This is copper fusion. Yes. This is a very, 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 very nice pan. They make the most amazing pan. This is basically hardened glass. You can see that I just boiled potatoes in that and you can barely see where they were. They clean really easy. It is, um, except it's copper infused. So there's a huge copper disc down here. So it's more like stainless, uh, with the enamel. Yeah. And it's, they cook so evenly, it's unbelievable. Uh, I highly recommend that if you're ever thinking about making an investment, they do not pay me to say this, but if you're thinking about making an investment in pots and pans, um, buy them, you can buy them slowly. You don't have to buy them all at once, right? So you don't have to like go in and spend $900 on pots and pans. You could buy, you know, ask for them for Christmas or Mother's Day or whatever, so yes. They will stick, but not if you cook in them correctly. <laughs> yes, your cookware does make a difference. Absolutely. So, absolutely. How can you get that? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I was, I was actually, I was actually approached. So, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about getting sponsors. I wish I did. If you find out, let me know. <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> Yes, yes. So good cookware does make a difference. Good knives make a difference. It makes your experience in your kitchen so much less frustrating when you have good quality tools to work with. Now then, having said all that, does a $99 pan work as well as a $300 pan? Yes. Does a $50 pan work as good as a $99 pan? Probably getting pretty close. Does a $20 pan work as good as a $50 pan? Absolutely not. I say anything that you're spending under $50, you need to reconsider or wait to buy something new until you've saved up a little bit and you can buy something a couple of notches up. Anything over $99 and in a, in especially in a skillet like this, I think you're doing really, really well and, um, and, and you're getting a good value. If you're like me and you're cooking all day, every single day, <laughs> then I, I, cause I recipe test almost all day long. You can ask Robin. I do dishes like four times a day. Um, I, do, I have two days a week that I sit and recipe test all day. And so if you're like me, then investing in something like this is like a no brainer. So yeah. Yeah, no pans from the dollar store. And unless that's all you can afford and that's the, and, and you'll cook at home if you can get them, then absolutely. <laughs> buy it because I'd rather you cook at home than cooking in a crappy pan, but it will make a difference. So my skillet is nice and hot. I do not want to leave my, um, I do not want to leave my hand there. So that's a good sign. I'm going to take splat and we're going to put about a tablespoon of coconut oil. Hear the sizzle? As soon as I went down in the skillet with that, I have a sizzle. That's what I want, especially, especially, um, when you are, yes, two days a week. Um, especially when you're working with, ouch. That may be a little too hot, especially when you're working with potatoes. Now then, when you put this in here, you need to be careful because what's going to happen is, listen, it's you're going to get a nice, oh, it didn't sizzle too much. Okay, good. I was afraid I was going to get like a super big pop. <laughs> That's okay. You're going to get a super big pop. Nope, we're good. That's actually perfect. That's actually the perfect sound that you want to hear. Now, all of a sudden, look how beautiful that is in that skillet. I mean, oh my gosh. No, Sherry, they're not the days that I don't scope. Um, <laughs> yes, I would love to have a recipe tester. No, those are sweet potatoes, actually. So here's the, here's the other clue and the other tip that I have to share with you. I'm throwing down some good tips today. 
So here's the other tip I have to share with you, and that is this. Do not be crazy town wanting to stir these every three seconds. So, oh, I'm sorry, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, parsnips, uh, purple fingerlings, and just regular uh, yellow fingerlings. That's four things, and not, I was doing three, and that's four things, yes. Um, so you want to get them nice and even in the bottom of your skillet. You see that? You want to get them nice and even in the bottom of your skillet, and you want to let them sit there for a minute. Do not go crazy town trying to stir them, and the reason is is because you want them to get a nice, crisp side on it. You want them to have a nice crisp edge on them so when you flip them, they don't fall apart. A lot of people, especially with sweet potatoes, they get downtown crazy. I did put coconut oil in, just a tablespoon. Now I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. My salt and pepper is actually married. It's a sea salt in a box here because that's how I like to cook. I have equal amounts of salt and pepper in here and I'm going to salt and pepper these pretty liberally because I want them to have really, really super good flavor. So what am I on, like five pinches now? So that's salt and pepper. I'm also going to throw a dash of garlic salt in there. A, a dash of garlic salt in there. And I'm just going to let them sit there for a minute. <laughs> they are. They're married. Salt and pepper. Yes, salt and pepper is here. And we're in the thick. Okay, never mind. I'm not singing. Not singing today. Thank you so much. That's so sweet for you to say that. Thank you. I am. I flipped the switch. That's right. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about my show. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and I'm really excited about my topic that day. It's something that is one of my best tips ever because we're going to do like a lot of kitchen hacks in that show and I'm going to show you guys how to have healthy habits um, without um, without all the time and energy that it takes. So yes, thank you so much. So now that I have a little bit of an edge, now let me see if I can pull one out of here and show you. Now that I have a little bit of a fried edge, I may have rushed them actually because I'm trying to go fast. Oh no, here's one. I'll show you the sweet potato. See that? How I have that how I have that charred edge, that's exactly what I'm looking for. That little, this makes a little membrane on the sweet potato and keeps it, and keeps it from falling apart as you are stir frying it. So you want to go gentle with these. So I'm going to do another flip around here, just a quick, easy, gentle stir. There we go. And I'm going to let those set there. I'm actually going to reduce my heat just a little bit. <laughs> Lower, please. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'm already done. Uh, parachute TV. Yeah, so Parachute uh, blah, Parachute TV here on Parachute TV 1 is what I'm going to be on. Yes, which is Parachute TV. <laughs> so, yes, on, on Periscope, not on Facebook. <laughs> so, hey, Tammy, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here on Facebook. So, yeah, it is a little bit like that. It is actually, it's, I don't really make fajitas, but yes, Jamie, it is, I, when I did used to make them, it is a little bit like that. Just let them be there for a minute. Just let them be. Don't try to beat them up. All right, let's move on to the ketchup. You guys want to make some homemade ketchup? If you've ever made homemade ketchup, type in the number one. If you've ever made homemade ketchup, type in the number one. One. Of course you have Liam. Hi, Liam. It's good to see you. Of course you have. I know you had Lucille. Suze, you have? Okay. Oh, a lot of you have. Awesome. <laughs> Is the homemade ketchup? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Number one, barbecue sauce. Yes, absolutely. I make my own barbecue sauce. I make my own mayo. I make everything. Yes, less sugar, absolutely, and better for you because you can control the ingredients. So I'm going to show you a healthy way to make. I'm going to give you just one more flip here. I'm going to show you a healthy way to make some ketchup. We're going to do that right over here. Everybody can see right there, okay? As long as I don't stand in front of the camera. Let's move this baby closer. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Okay, let's get my skillet lid out of the way because I really don't need that. I'm going to put my tongs right back here so that I can stir when necessary. So already in a mixing cup, because I'm going to use a stick mixer to make this. Um, <laughs> I use ketchup for especially these fries. These fries are amazing with ketchup that we're making today. So this is a lot of people with children use ketchup. I mean, we have fish fries every once in a while where ketchup is served and loved. We make hamburgers. It's coming up on spring. We love hamburgers. Um, so yeah, we use ketchup for different things and it actually lasts a really long time. So eat a lot of ketchup. Good. Well, we're about to <laughs> yeah, 
I know. Ketchup sandwiches. I used to eat ketchup sandwiches when I was a kid. What? That is nuts. I did. Totally. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it, Linda. That's awesome. So this is three cans. These are six ounce cans of, uh, of tomato paste. Now you guys know that I'm normally into buying this in a jar. I cannot find it in the jar anywhere. What in the world? What in the world? I cannot find it anywhere right now. So <laughs> right? I know. I understand, Janie. I love ketchup too. So this is the, the six ounce cans. I would prefer that you try to find them in a bottle or in a jar in glass and not in a can. The reason is, is because these BPA cans like this and tomatoes are acidic and they actually leach BPA into there and I just would rather you do that. But this is what was available for, to me and I'm not freaking out about it. One time is not gonna get me. So, um, so, but I do try to avoid it when, when possible, but you can see that is absolutely, absolutely organic. When you're buying pre-made tomatoes, <laughs> you can get it in a tube, absolutely. Um, when you're buying, but that would be a lot of tubes because you use three of these six ounce cans. That would be like a big giant tube. So when you are buying, I'm giving these another quick stir here. I just don't want them to burn. Um, when you're buying canned tomatoes or jarred tomatoes, you are actually, um, you actually need to buy them organic because when they cook them, they really, it really, really makes the pesticides more bioavailable to you. So just please buy them organic. Save yourself the trouble and buy them organic and in a jar if you can find it. So I have three cans of tomato paste, and not tomato sauce, tomato paste in here. Yes, I, I, like the, I like the jar too, but I couldn't find it, so. Okay, to that we are gonna add uh, one tablespoon of honey. I'm just gonna use my finger because I don't have anything else here. My honey's a little solidified, which is fine. I prefer that you use uh, honey that is local to you. We're gonna use one tablespoon of black strap molasses. Black strap molasses. I love this stuff. I could drink it. That's right. Thank you, Janie. Absolutely. There's no excuse. Um, I love black strap molasses. It is amazing. And, um, and this is what I like to use in my ketchup because it has this really deep, amazing flavor profile to it that makes ketchup the bomb diggity. You are going to, when you find this and you make this ketchup and use this black strap molasses, you're going to be like, what? She's a genius. I'm just kidding. Yes. I love it too. So good. So good. Actually has some nutrients in it that are good for you as well. So don't be shy. So we're gonna do a tablespoon of that as well. That is gonna be our sweetener for our ketchup. Hate autocorrect, stupid autocorrect. <laughs> stupid, stupid autocorrect. Ouch. All right, sorry, gotta give it another stir here. Getting some blackened edges. These are actually almost done, so that's good. All right. Now we are gonna do, uh, now we are gonna do, let me, I have to look at here, so sorry. <laughs> now we are gonna do, I, as I look at this, uh, <laughs> I can't find it on there. We're gonna do a teaspoon of yellow mustard. So this is just yellow mustard, ground yellow mustard. I buy it from a local spice shop. I like to do a heaping teaspoon. It's really like a teaspoon and a half because I like the tart flavor of ketchup like that. So yes, so that's what I'm doing. Um, we are gonna use two, two teaspoons of onion powder. So two teaspoons, heaping again, of onion powder. You know, ketchup is a lot of spices. That's pretty much what's in ketchup is a lot of spices. So absolutely. I like this kind of vinegary, so I am gonna, this is apple cider vinegar. This is just regular apple cider vinegar. I'm actually gonna put like two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in there. So easy. A dash of cloves, please do not judge me or my cloves. These are not the best cloves in the world, quite frankly. I do not have any fresh, so that's what we're using. We're using a dash of allspice. I love allspice. It's amazing in here. So a dash of that. No, I do not use, I just saw somebody ask about Bragg's. I don't because I do not use a lot. I'm almost, I need to get, refill my cinnamon. And a dash of cinnamon. Um, I do not use apple cider vinegar very often. So, um, so I do not buy Bragg's, but yes, Bragg's is a great brand. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I just don't use it a lot. Yeah. 
you buy it in bulk. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't, I don't cook with it a lot. I use it very little, so yes. I know a lot of health people really, really like apple cider vinegar, and that's fine. Um, it's just not something that is in my repertoire, so yeah, cheaper in bulk, right? It is. I, well, I know, but it's just something that I haven't, I haven't run out of this one yet, so I haven't bought the Braggs, and I don't even know why I have this. Probably bought this on vacation when we were driving somewhere and just brought it home with me, so I don't even know where it came from, quite frankly, or sent Robin out to get it, and that's what I ended up with, so. All right, so I'm going to set, oh my gosh, this already smells amazing. I'm going to set these, it already smells like ketchup, and I haven't done a darn thing to it, so, well, I have, but... All right, our french fries are done, so I'm going to set those over to the side, and I can quit messing with those and turn off my heat. Oh, now then I'm going to add a, and this would have been very crucial, I want to add a cup of water. I'm going to go slow with the water, so I'm going to go half a cup at a time because I want to judge its thickness. I Nobody wants runny ketchup, right? <laughs> like nobody wants runny ketchup. And now I have my little hand stick mixer. You can do this in a blender. You do not have to have this mixer. But this is what I use. Isn't that a lovely sound? <laughs> it's a lovely sound. It needs to be thicker, I mean a thinner, excuse me, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to go a fourth of a cup this time, and I'm just going to keep adding that until I get from... Oh, thank you. Yes, I see an explanation of, of uh, molasses there. Sorry, I have to look down to do these things. This is not a very friendly, a very friendly scope from my perspective. More water, please. I really do want it to, I'm just gonna put the rest of that in there. I really do want it to look like um, ketchup. <laughs> I don't want it to look like tomato paste with some flavors in there. I want it to look like, I want it to look like ketchup, so. If you get too much water in there, a great way to thicken it and make it kind of gel like you would think of a you know, a squeeze bottle ketchup, um, is to is to use some chia seeds, grind them, and then put them back in here a tablespoon at a time. And if you get it too thin, and that will actually add some thickness to it. <laughs> I think I just like doing this. <laughs> If you put this in a blender, it's going to get super smooth. I just don't want to drag my whole blender over here, but it's fine, just like it is. All right, so we have that. Let me just take this off here. Now we have a big, giant thing of ketchup. Here is my fake out moment for you guys. If you want it to be smoother, you can add a little bit of hot water and smooth it down even more. Um, but this is fine for my family. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. Tastes like ketchup. If you want it sweeter, if your family likes sweeter ketchup, I like tartar ketchup, you can just add a little bit, uh oh, I see I've got something here on the side. You can add just a little bit more honey um, or, or you can add a little bit more molasses if you were so inclined. I like my ketchup a little bit more vinegary than sweet. So here's my super big trip to, uh, la, la, here's my super big trick. I know. <laughs> It's so, it's so simple. It's crazy. So here's my super big trick for this. And that is number one, if you have a ketchup bottle right now, to empty, make yourself some ketchup, right? Empty it out, wash it out really good. Get it really nice and clean. Run some hot water through it. Get everything nice and clean. Let it dry completely. Do not do it with the water in there or whatever from the other ketchup and put this in it. And then when you go to serve your children or to serve your husband or anybody like that, you can just squeeze it right out of the ketchup bottle. They're not even going to know. They have no idea <laughs> that you just replaced their ketchup. If you don't need to do a fake out like that, I keep mine in a mason jar. Um, I actually like it after it's chilled a little while. Um, but I just keep mine in a mason jar in my refrigerator and we just dollop out what we want if you don't need to fake out. so. Um, but yes, if you need to fake out, it's a great way to do it. I've actually recommended that for several people and it works really well. 
So there's that. I'm going to show you the French fries. Actually, we're going to plate them up after I eat one. Mmm. Oh my gosh. So stinking good. Ridiculously good. I could eat the whole thing myself. So beautiful. Absolutely beautiful on the plate. Sorry, I'll be right back with you. I'll be paying attention again one day. <laughs> Tomorrow we are doing a recipe that is a classic favorite and we are remaking it. And I have to tell you, it's my recipe from scratch. This is a recipe that I have come up, I have been perfecting for quite a while. And this is actually a recipe too, like a technique to do this where you're getting these perfectly fried french fries. I have been perfecting, look at that, gorgeous, <laughs> without any ketchup, right? Yes. So I'm going to take a sweet potato fry. Look at that. Ooh, yummy. Mmm. <laughs> I love ketchup and sweet potato fries. <laughs> I know, it's so pretty, right? This gorgeous plate of potatoes. And it's so, it's so like... Appetizing. I mean, even for, even for, I have to have a parsnip. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm gonna, I must be hungry. Mmm. So good. The parsnips are like sweet. And I, I actually, I don't like agave, so I would not use agave. Um, but a lot of people do. I know, right? <laughs> so this gorgeous, I don't have a clean spoon. I'm telling you, hold on. I do not have a clean spoon over here. The parsnips taste so amazing. Have a big old dollop of your ketchup, just like that, on your plate. Little salt and pepper, like those big flaky, those big flaky flakes of salt on there after they've been cooked. What? Yes. How long does ketchup last? Somebody asked that. Let me get back to that question. So I have had ketchup in my refrigerator, a big batch of it. Actually, we just used the last of it. That's why I decided to do this recipe so I can make some more. Um, but we just used the last batch of it probably about three weeks ago. Maybe not. Maybe like two or three weeks ago. Anyway, no, maybe about a week ago when I took the photo and put it on the VIP page, that was my last batch. That was like my last squirt out for that. I was like, oh crap, we're out of ketchup. So, <laughs> so yes. I know you want to eat the whole plate. I know totally. I do too. Like that's a whole sweet potato, but what's wrong with that? I love them. So, but I have had that in my refrigerator probably three to four months. It's absolutely has been absolutely fine. The one thing that you want to check for is to make sure that it doesn't get mold on it. Tomatoes will mold. So you want to be a little careful about that. Now, if you want to do smaller batches of this, you actually can do smaller batches of it and just cut the recipe in thirds or half or something like that. If you just want to make it for an event or just for one dinner or something like that but tomatoes will mold and because there's no preservatives um, the actually the, um, the apple cider vinegar helps prevent that a little bit helps pre preserve them a little bit but it's not gonna do the trick totally so just make sure that there's no mold growing on top and as long as it doesn't smell funky then you should be fine so yes but not as long as like a bottle of ketchup would last right I mean <laughs> those ketchups that you're buying are full of GMOs and full of junk that are so bad for you. They have tons of sugar. They have tons and tons of preservatives in them. And this is an all natural product. So it's not going to last as long as that. So yes, I hope I answered that question in a very roundabout way. <laughs> yeah, I know you should not have anything in your refrigerator that would last two years in the freezer, maybe, but not in the refrigerator. So yes. <laughs> Uh, this recipe is not on my site. Hopefully I have a ton of recipes to catch up on right now. So hopefully in the next seven days, um, we will have this up for you guys. You can always watch and replay how to do it as well. Um, and take notes a lot. I know a lot of people like binge or binge watching me right now. So I had, I got a message. I've gotten a message over the last couple of weeks from three people that say that they go to catch.me forward slash go to kitchens and they're been what they're binge watching go to kitchens. I was like, that's hilarious. I I'm being binge watched. That's awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. I think it's your first time here, right? Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I don't have any other solutions. I know that there's some homemade ranch dressings out there. Actually, on the GoTo Kitchens page, on the Facebook page, there is. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I know. It's so funny. We're going to binge watch Go To Kitchen. So I'm like, that's awesome. I love it. It's like having my own TV show, but not for real. Like nobody's paying me to do it, but... <laughs> So, so there you go. I'm like standing here holding these. Look at my pretty French fries. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, I love Molly. You'll have to catch. Um, tell me what your name is. Is it Nicole? I think I see Nicole there. I know right here. Have them. Mm. Oh my gosh. They even look better close up. Look at that crazy town. Good. Uh, hold on. You guys stick with me here on, on uh, Periscope. Don't leave. It's going to sound like I'm leaving and I'm not leaving. Everybody on Facebook, thank you so much for being here. It is, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you every weekday at noon mountain time. Tomorrow I will actually be back. I'm making a classic recipe that is a complete redo. It is not guilt free, but it is darn close. So, and you're going to be like, what? She loves us. She made us this. So I, I'm going to be here tomorrow. I can't wait to see you then. Thank you so much on Facebook for being here. Check out Go To Kitchens. The link is below. Consider becoming a VIP. Bye. Okay, sorry. Um, I had to get rid of those Facebook people. Gosh. <laughs> Just kidding. Those pesky Facebook people. Um, I can't. I don't remember where I was at. But yes, I can't remember what the questions were. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh yes, I was on Facebook Live as well. So uh, Molly, that's what we were talking about. <coughs> and I didn't see if you confirmed that your name is Nicole. I'm sorry, I was looking over here. So um, yeah, <laughs> you and Molly are on today. Yes, so Molly and I both are on uh, every weekday. And I think Molly even does some weekends. Thank you so much, Sherry, your sweetheart. Okay, good. Hi, Nicole. It's nice to meet you. So uh, yes, so Molly and I tomorrow night are actually going to be on blab.im. If somebody wants to type that in. Yes, that's right. Tonight at blab.im forward slash go to kitchens. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be on blab and we are going to be throwing down. So we're going to switch hit topics. So our, our tips, not topics. We're going to switch hit tips. So she's going to share a tip and then I'm going to share a tip and then she's going to share a tip and then I'm going to share a tip. We're going to do that. <laughs> thank you. Je uh, <laughs> thank you, Janie. What's going on? <clears throat> I get to talking too fast. Um, switch hips. Yes, we're going to. I wish. She's tiny. I want to switch hips with Molly. That's a great idea. <laughs> yes, I do have a recipe for mayo as well. That's at 630 Mountain Time. So that's 530 Pacific and 830 Eastern. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? I have a couple people I would switch hips with. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hilarious, Lucille. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Hey, Lisa, I didn't see you in here. It's good to see you. Sorry, I just now saw you. Uh, yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> So um, anyway, so tonight, uh, that's what's going on. And then we have a recipe that somebody submitted. Actually, Jen, you guys know Jen. Um, Jen, Ruby Jen, uh, submitted a recipe to us for chicken enchiladas. And it's really nasty recipe. And Molly and I are going to break it down tonight and actually remake it right live in front of you. So not make it like we're not going to cook it, but we're going to tell you what our, each of our tips would be for remaking that recipe tonight. So it's going to give you some, we're going to, we're trying to equip you guys with some ideas to make your own changes and make your own <laughs> right I know me too <laughs> um, but to make your own changes in your recipes so maybe you thank you so much 630 central that's right no six no 630 mountain uh, 730 central 830 eastern and 530 pacific um, but to, to equip you guys with, uh, oh, good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We are working together. We're super, you guys kind of asked for it. Um, you guys asked that we would do something together. So this is what we're doing. And so we're excited about it. Maybe just the tip of the iceberg. So yes. So we're going to try to help you guys, uh, think outside of the box a little bit about ingredients. And when you have an ingredient that you don't want to eat anymore, what is a good, uh, blab, B L A B dot I, the letter I M as in Mary, blab dot I M. Yep. I know it's going to be so much fun. We're calling it Giggle Fest uh, 2016 because we are both gigglers. Actually, she's a giggler and I'm a cackler. So it's Giggle Cackle Fest. It's going to be great. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, we can't, we can't make everybody happy there, Sherry. We just try to, we just try to pick a time and go with that. So, right. Yes. Cackle Cackle. That's right. <laughs> So, um, all right, you guys, I'm going to fly out. I actually have a date with my husband in the afternoon because I have a blab tonight. So I'm taking some time off this afternoon to have a date with my husband and, um, and I want to go do that. So 
<laughs> I do. I cackle. I can't help it. It's just the way I laugh. I know. A cankle? I do not. That's right. Yeah, I don't have those. That's good. Better than a cankle. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, you guys. I love you so much. I will be back here tomorrow with a surprise recipe. I'll be on Blab tonight at 6.30 Mountain Time. Blab.im forward slash go to kitchens. Dot, it's not dot com. Go to kitchens. I know. I am. <clears throat> So, uh, bye. See you guys. Um, and I will see you there tonight. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yay. Thanks for being here so much. Uh, DM. I don't, he called me. Oh, that's a nice thing. I like that. I like that direct message. He called me. That's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, you guys love you so much. Uh, I will see you back here tomorrow noon mountain time at lunch with Leslie. I will do a quick periscope to announce the blab and show you the link, uh, be right before I go on like 15 minutes before the blab tonight. So you can look for it there. If you forget, um, there'll be a reminder here on periscope as well. So, all right guys, see you later. Bye. Thanks all replay viewers. Remember you can still give hearts and replays. Oh, and don't forget to go over and become a VIP at go to kitchens because that is really where all the fun happens. If you think this is fun, go check out the VIP page on Facebook because that is a lot of fun, but you have to sign up at the go to kitchens website, VIP access. It's just an email address. It's not as fancy as it sounds, just an email address, confirm it, get a link, come over to the Facebook page. Let's have some fun. It's a blast over there. So yes, you, you guys go, uh, you guys go <laughs> figure that out. Uh Oh, Oh no. Is it me in the nose? It's me in the nose. Isn't it? It's me in the nose. I know it is. I knows it is <laughs> the parsnip nose. <laughs> Your nose is as cute as a parsnip. <laughs> if anybody ever says that to you, you're in trouble. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Bye.